So for some time, a number of us have been asking how do we create communities that are more sustainable, that do less damage and place fewer demands on the ecological systems that, that support us, that enable our existence. And for some time that's been enough, but no longer. Now we have to start asking another question. How do we create communities that are more resilient, that are able to continue to function despite the disruptions that are caused by the consequences of our past behavior? And that's a different set of questions. It's a set of questions that leads us to wonder what would an infrastructure look like that is uh, able to withstand increasing severe weather conditions, flooding, drought, that sort of thing. But it also leads us to ask questions about what would community systems look like that enable people to have uh, equal access or at least a, a fair shot at a decent uh, quality of life. So the Masters of Science in Resilient and Sustainable Communities takes a very broad approach to thinking about what does it mean to be sustainable? What does it mean to be resilient? And the way that we put together this program is I asked questions of leaders in business, in education, in NGOs. I asked them, what are the skills and the knowledge areas that people would need to do this important work, this absolutely essential work? And from their answers, we built a curriculum that starts with a deep knowledge of the places our students live around the country, that uh, walks, uh, walks through climate modeling so they can begin to imagine what the climate projections for their own regions are going to look like, that deals with the theories of sustainability and resilience, but also looks at economic systems. In what ways do our current economic systems contribute to the problems we're having? What are some alternative economic systems that people are looking into? We look at energy systems. How is energy currently produced? How might it be produced? How is it distributed? What's going to be most resilient uh, in terms of energy? But also food systems. Where does our food come from? How does it get to us? Ensuring those kinds of distribution networks uh, is also a key part of this. We, uh, we have students learning uh, leadership skills, community engagement skills, but also learning to think about social justice in the sense of um, a community is not going to be very sustainable if a significant portion of that community feels uh, marginalized, feels like their concerns are not being dealt with. So by focusing our degree on these skills and knowledge areas that people are looking for, that employers are looking for, We've been able to produce graduates who are getting jobs in as sustainability coordinators for uh, universities or corporations or cities. Uh, we've produced quite a number of people who are community planners, regional planners, who began doing that kind of work as well. A number of our students come out of nonprofit organizations and continue to do that kind of work, but know how to do it, learn how to do it in ways that maybe hadn't occurred to them before they'd begun to study energy and food systems and, and climate change impacts in addition uh, to the community organizing that they're doing. So uh, this is a really growing uh, area in terms of jobs. In fact, uh, just a few years ago when we started to think about this, this degree, uh, Dade County in Florida was not even really talking about climate change. Now their Office of Resilience Planning is one of the largest offices in the county and they're constantly looking for new people. But there are very few people who have the kind of training to do that kind of work. So if you're interested in getting involved in the challenges to address climate change, to address inequalities associated with a, a post-carbon world, um, I don't think there's a better degree out there for this kind of work.